<laughs> Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today is also Sax Hog Day. Sax Hog, there it is. The, uh, the, <laughs> Don't the, ask why, the, the just sax, put it in. <laughs> the Sax Hog saw his shadow today, so we're going to have six more weeks of uh, savings. Savings. Six more weeks of savings. Six more weeks uh, of spending. <laughs> Either one is fine with six us. Six more weeks of swedging. <sighs> Oh, of six course. more weeks of swedging. Uh, so take Sax Hog and put it in the comments below. We're going to give you a prize for that. That's going to be a Music Medic uh, gift card of uh, one million dollars. No, it's going to be like ten dollar gift card, which is about the size of our prize right yeah, now. It's yeah. a good prize. Spend it on the website. Gift it to whoever you want. Take Sax Hog and celebrate. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments with the hashtag. Please make sure you also like and subscribe. Uh, and when you do subscribe, hit the little bell thing. The bell, the bell thing. There's like a bell thing next like to a little, subscribe. Looks like a bell. Looks and like a. And there it is. is yeah. It looks yeah. like this. Click it. Click it. Click the bell. So uh, because we're starting our stream a little early today, um, so you do get kind of a notification if we go, you know, start the stream late or early. Um, we're on time. It just we're on it still time. lets you know. Usually we're on time, but today we started a little early, so that will let you know. So today, uh, thank you for doing that. And make sure you put Sax Hog into the comments. <laughs> there it is, up there. <laughs> uh, so, Ryan, we're going to be going over uh, the summer bushings and how to make them feel great. Uh, I know we have a tool list to show them. This is minimal tooling. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a more of an advanced repair topic for those of you who are in the trade, but also for you amateur technicians. This is something that they can do at home with uh, the right tools. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but before we give them the tool list, uh, let's also go over just kind of the basic of, you know, this pivot system and maybe if you want to compare and contrast it, compress, contrast it to... I will a, do uh, both. I will do compare and contrast and con contrast. Com, com, contrast. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, okay. let's do both. We'll talk about both style pivot screw systems, what I've been referring to as the true tapered. Okay. I don't know if it's a thing, but I'm trying to make it a thing. Sounds like true a thing. True tapered system and this Selmer spring-loaded pivot screw bushing okay. system. That is a lot. Yes, the spring-loaded bushings, whatever you want to call them, they're Selmer, they're spring-loaded, they're pivot screws, and they're bushings. And it sounds like a Selmer thing. It does, honestly. it does. Yep. And in French, it's even longer <laughs> to say. Yeah, it takes about 15 minutes to completely say it. Um, uh, but now, here we go. Okay. So I'm going to go over the true tapered system for pivot screws. Okay. This is what you find on Mark 6s, Mark 7s, um, current Yamahas, Yanagasawas, Kyle Worth. Um, what you have is your post face. Here's your post. Where's our theme music? <laughs> so there's your post with your pivot screw. Okay. Okay. And a traditional uh, true tapered system. The end of the key that butts up against the post has a, I guess, corresponding tapered hole. Okay, and on this style of system, it actually rides somewhere in here. Okay, so it's not actually pressing that point in, it's riding kind of on the taper of that pivot screw. So this is what I have been calling the true tapered system okay and because i there's something that i call the false tapered system okay similar but we'll save that for another video yes in the spring we're going to go but over you're it. only going to find out if you click the little bell ah uh, that's right so you got to click the bell subscribe and click the bell like yes, sir like you gotta like it too share subscribe click the bell that's it yeah that's pretty much it four things done takes like 15 seconds what you don't have 15 seconds Okay. Apparently we do. Apparently we do. <laughs> a little bit more. So, true tamer system. Now we're going to go over the Selmer style spring loaded pivot screw bushings. The post and pivot screw are practically identical. Okay, so there's our post, there's our pivot screw. It's the end of the key that is the difference. Rather than having this corresponding tapered hole, it just has a cylindrical hole drilled in the end and then what you have right here that contacts the pivot screw you have a little brass bushing so there we are right there so there's our bushing I'm going to put some stripes on it doesn't have that in real life but and so you can see it 
Yes, here we go. Yeah, let's go to our super up close. Here we go. There it is, right in focus. That's the bushing. That's the bushing, okay? Because so you can see the little brass bushing. I don't know if we can get up close to the inside. It's just a, just looks like a, 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 a taper on the inside of it. And then you have your spring. That is, uh, I'll use red for that, red for the spring. So here's your okay. spring. So what happens is when you install this, the key sits there and when you uh, screw down your pivot screw, it compresses this bushing or it compresses this spring and that prevents a lot of that lateral play. If this had any gap in this, you would hear that the key would actually be moving back and forth. It would be noisy. Okay? You may even have some oscillating play. Okay, where the key kind of rotates around that post. So you have the two types, the lateral play and then our oscillating play. So what Selmer did was they've come up with this system that even if this isn't fit perfectly in the factory and when I do key fitting, it takes a while to fit each pivot screw. Okay, and there's some time involved. So they've come up with this system to save a lot of time in the manufacturing process so that when you tighten this down, it compresses this and it gets rid of any lateral play. So these could be loose straight out of the factory. Absolutely. Absolutely. They could be. They, okay. just, they, they may have a little bit of lateral play or even just a little bit of oscillating play. So, so Ryan, what are, the, what are the problems with the spring-loaded bushing that you've encountered? I, you know, I know some people don't like it. Mm -hmm. Why would that be? Um, the big thing is that it, because it's not, it has this little bit of variation in that spring compression, um, it's, it's tough to get it to feel, at least some, some players and some techs say, to get it to feel good. You, know, you never can get it to 100%. Even in this key right here, in fact, this is my horn. Mm. Brought this in. Thank you. This is, un, un, yeah, you're welcome. This is unplanned. This is all original. It's all mine. It's got all my bad notes in it. Um, but you can see there's a little bit of play. Now, if this were a traditional true tapered system, like a Mark VI, the key, you would actually hear it click back and forth. But with this spring-loaded system, this spring is giving you kind of a little bit of cushioning. So. I don't really hear it as much. I can still feel it, okay. but I don't really hear it as much. The other problem is there tends to be wear in this brass bushing. Hmm. The bushing is brass. The key is brass. It just tends to wear, and over time, it gets a little sloppy, even sometimes from the factory. Okay. It, gets, it feels a little sloppy. Hmm. And, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, some guys take the little spring-loaded bushing out, and they extend the spring. They maybe stretch it out to maybe see if they can kind of get it to stay in place, and eh, it's a lot of work. Okay. So, I'm going to show you my technique or, you know, first the tools that I use and then my technique for dealing with spring-loaded bushings. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's go over the tools that we're going to use for this job and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about that simple technique. Well, here they are. There's the tools. Um, nice. First things first, and I forgot it on the previous <laughs> broadcast, would be your screwdriver. Very important. You've got to take the key off. Yep. Okay. okay. Spring hook for undoing the spring. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I got some pliers just in case. Um, this is important. I have my swedging pliers. It's probably one of the very few, few specialty tools that you'll need. Okay. So I do some swaging. Here. Swaging, and that's swaging. the Nipex medium size. Yep, swaging exactly. Plug. Okay. So um, I got my Nipex cutters here. I use the, those to cut my drill rod, and I will be using these for my swedging. Okay. okay. Swedging bar, swedging the end. Uh, let's see, what else? I have my inner and outer deburring tools. So this is my outer deburring tool. It's a cut burr, uh, and it's what I will use at the end of the hinge tube to remove any burrs. So there's my cut burr and a corresponding bobber. So this gets the inside of the hinge tube if there are any burrs. Uh, rawhide mallet, a little knocker just in case I need to move some posts around. Let's see, what else? I have my um, hinge tube cutter, and I'm going to be using this in case I do need to use this on the push stroke. So I have my corresponding pilot. Uh, let's see here, caliper just in case. Grease. So when we reassemble, we got to make sure we grease those bushings back up. And probably the most expensive tool of all, I came in early to make this. <laughs> this very, is what I use nice. to remove the spring-loaded bushings. This is basically just a pin vise and a needle spring. Uh, I believe this is 0.8 millimeter size needle spring. Uh, and I use the gold because I'm extra like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, what I did is just put just a little bend 
boop, just like that. And that's the sound it made when I did it. Mm -hmm. Boop, just like this. Um, just in the end, this is what I use to actually remove the spring-loaded bushings. Okay, so those are, those are that's all you need. That's it. Okay. That's pretty much it. And this process is, uh, since I've watched you do it more than once now, it's fairly simple. You just Get basically it. have three, three basic steps. It's just, yeah, it's just basically knowing kind of what to do, what steps to do, and in order. Okay. So. What's our first step? First step is you got to have a saxophone that has it. Okay. <laughs> That's the first thing. So we're talking about, I believe it's Selmer Series 2s until the, the more modern ones. Okay. Um, you know, I'm, I, I still can't, I can't remember if they had it in the Series 1 or not. Um, that would be a good comment. Please feel free to write yeah. in if you know this answer. Um, but I know the Series 2 has it because mine has it. Yeah. Series 3, I believe the marks, uh, the reference 54 and 36, I believe those also had it. And then Selmer Supreme, question mark? Maybe. Slight Let question. us know. Let us know. Also put okay. Sax Hog in Sax the Hog. comments because well, it it's Sax Hog Day and you can win a prize. Make sure you put the hashtag in there too. Like, subscribe, and do the bell thing. Do the bell Do the bell thing. <laughs> Do the bell thing. <laughs> All right, so what's our first step? So the first step is identifying a key that needs this kind of work. And I have, this is my G key here, and you can see, you might not be able to see, but I can feel it moving back and forth, okay? The first thing is you have to treat this, you have to look at the post. The post spread cannot be too much, okay? So what I'm thinking about doing at first is maybe moving my post in so my key doesn't have any space and it doesn't click back and forth, okay? And I have that right here. I can actually move this post in. Okay, I can just tap this one. Um, what I'm looking for is any posts that are maybe double or triple posts. Down here, the G sharp post is right at the bottom of that. It's connected to it, so I can't really move this post. But this is a single post by itself. There's nothing else attached to it. So I, what I could do is I could just tap this post in, get that key to fit a little bit tighter, and then you wouldn't feel this oscillating play. Well, let's say you can't do that for whatever reason, and we're going to treat it the way I would normally treat it. So I'm going to take off the key. This was only rehearsed once before. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even there for dress rehearsal, so... I'm kind of winging it. Okay. So take the key off, and I'm going to go to my extra fancy tool. Where is it? It's over here. Here it is. And you can see all I need to do is just take that bent end, stick it right in that bushing, and then there it is, like magic. Wow, that was easy. Popped out just like that. Sometimes these guys are, are tough to get out, and what may have happened at the factory or whatever um, is it has a burr. Okay, a little inner burr, a little outer burr, and it kind of folds in and it prevents this guy from coming out. What you can do is take your ball burr, even while the bushing is still in, and just remove it, try it again. A lot of times it'll pop out. Okay, so that's the first step, and that's why I have my deburring tools to deburr. So, what I'm going to do now is take one of my swedging bars. Okay, and what I've done ahead of time is I've measured the diameter of the bushing, which is about three millimeters, and I've picked a corresponding size drill rod so that I can insert it into the end, and I can actually swedge. So I'm going to use my swedging pliers, and what that, that is going to do is that's going to lengthen this hinge tube very slightly. I'm treating this solid pivot screw like a traditional, you know, uh, key that has a rod going all the way through it. Okay. So, so that's like 118 thousandths or three millimeters. Absolutely, yep. Okay, cool. 0. 0.118 or three millimeters. Gotcha. Okay. And, then, and there's modern saxophone, like uh, a lot of the Asian manufacturers mm -hmm. today use a three millimeter rod. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it is, that's yeah, fairly it is a very common, common one. Okay. So, uh, then you're just going to take your swedging pliers, find the correct hole, and then just swedge it like normal. As long as you have this rod in, you are now just lengthening that area where the spring bushing is going to be. What we're trying to do is get the end of this key to fit closer to the face of that post. But, uh, Ryan, if you're, yeah. uh, uh, while you're talking, or while I'm, I'm gonna talk while you're working, yeah. if you're swedging the end of the key, uh, what was I gonna say? 
It was a good <laughs> question. I even wrote it down. What's, what's the purpose of the bushing then if you're swedging the end of the key? The, the bushing is there, again, with to, to just give you a little bit of room. If it's too close, if I swedge too much and the end of that hinge tube is butted uh, too tightly against the face of the post, what I may have to do is remove some. And that's where I have my hinge tube cutters. Okay. So I'm trying to get it to as close to that as possible without really coming into contact because then you're not going to feel that much lateral play. Okay. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you, no, no. You no were, that, that, that's a good of, question. You were in the middle of swedging. Yep. The other thing that swedging does, so we, we've talked about lengthening. The other thing that swedging does is it reduces the diameter so that the end of the hinge tube will actually fit tighter around the bushing. When you get that lateral play, a lot of times that bushing is loose within the end of the key. So by swedging, we're, we're tightening it down and it's staying tighter around that bushing and we, we eliminate that lateral play. So we're taking those two things out of the equation. We're taking away the lateral play and then the, that oscillating okay. play. Yep. Gotcha. So I've put my bushing back in. Uh, really? Uh, you put the bushing back put in? Put the with... bushing back in. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on, see if I have oh, yeah. a little less... This okay, way. you're testing. Testing, yeah, doing my test fit. So we've disassembled. We've done some swedging with our three millimeter rod. We've placed the bushing back in the key, and now we're doing a test fit. Yep. So this is basically steps one and two, would you one say? One and two, yes. Sweet. So now we're test fitting, and I still feel a little bit of play back and forth. So I'm just going to take it off, do the same thing, maybe do a little bit more swedging. Oh, you know what? I'm just thinking we should have gone with Swedgeuary. Oh. Swedgeuary. But instead, folks, put Saxhog in the comments. That's right. Saxhog. Saxhog. Depending on that. Two Gs. It's got to have two Gs, and it's got to have the hashtag. That's or right. Or for you older folks, it's the pound sign. <laughs> Hashtags are the pound sign. Uh. I, I believe it's actually called an Octothorpe. Really? Look that up. Look that up. It's one of those minor trivia facts that I know. Wow. So Octothorpe. I heard the word. Hashtag Octothorpe. Put it in the comments. <laughs> you could win uh, word of the day calendar that I've been having. <laughs> so Octothorpe was yesterday. Here we go. So we're doing a little bit more swedging. I have my three millimeter rod in. You can never swedge without your rod in the hinge tube. So I'm swedging, I'm swedging. I'm and we swedging. have shadows in the picture because it's Sax Hog Day. There it is. Shadow right there. There's a chef spooky shadow over here. Look at this. Look. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> it's a Sax Hog. It's salt shadow. Six more weeks of swedging. Oh, boy. We're having, uh, we're having, we're having too much fun. Too much fun. Too much Good fun. Good so, Okay. If you guys want to follow along, make sure you click that bell. <laughs> so I swedged a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and put my bushing back in. But before I do... I'm going to show you how I lubricate the bushing. So I take this pivot and roller lubricant, handy that it comes in a syringe, and I can just put a little bit right in the end of the hinge tube, and then I can insert my spring-loaded bushing. There we go. So let's go ahead and reassemble. The bushing's in. The sax hog saw its shadow. It did. It did. It really, it really did. So there we go. Let's see. Pretty much gone. It is. I can. I mean, in, in the, the room here, it's definitely quiet. Yes. Yeah. So you don't hear that. I feel just a, just a hair of movement. Just a hair of movement. But again, it's that spring that you can feel just kind of keeping everything kind of in place. Put the key back on. There we go. Boom. Sweet. Excellent, Ryan. Did I announce the winner of last week? I don't think you did. I so, don't think you did. So if you take your hashtag and put it in the comments Sax below, Hulk. you can be winning uh, a prize. And this week's prize was going to be uh, a Music Medic gift card. And, but uh, last week was the last week of G the glue year. The glue year. Yes. So uh, John McBride, you were the winner of last week for taking the comments and, and doing all the things. And thank you for yes, that. Yes, putting in Octothorpe. Happy glue year. <laughs> 
Octothorpe. So make sure that, John, you send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and I'll get you your prize. The rest of you, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you are taking Sax Hog and putting it in the comments below. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I think we've... Uh, I think we're I think about we've worn good. out our welcome. That's right. If you guys have any questions about this process, feel free to contact us here or at musicmedic.com. And until next week, uh, happy repairing. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. The bell. Do the bell. Do the bell thing. Uh, oh, I'm going to. Oh, boy. Let's see what we uh, got. We're, st here. we're still on. They can still see us. They're still, they're still watching. Really? I think so. Okay. No, try to. So we're having. This is this is like our theme. This is our thing. I kind of like. We need like a. We have a thing. This is how we end. We just, we just can't end it. It's good until the. End. <laughs>